you told the team, you know, really proud of how they handled the last 24 hours to be able to have it with such an inexperienced group to have a one-day turnaround from Friday night, put a game plan together, which involved guarding a lot of ball screens and, and negating three-point opportunities on, on those type of ball screens. I thought they did a terrific job of implementing that and, and executing it for the most part. And we got leaky at times, but uh, uh, really proud of how they responded and, and listened and worked over the last y yesterday in practice to make sure uh, that we could have some success with what we were going to do tonight. So, um, you know, we're able to share the ball. That guys really were unselfish. Move the ball around. We were able to play inside out a fair amount. We didn't shoot the three as well as maybe we can or will down the road, but we were able to obviously get to the free throw line as well. So, um, you know, for the second game of the year, really uh, happy with the progression that's made. Now we obviously got to take a, another step or two or three or four forward before Thursday. Jesse, Greg, you mentioned before you knew this team would be pretty versatile scoring, given that. Five different guys led the team in scoring uh, in the exhibition tour. But have you been pleasantly surprised by how it's all shaken out the first couple of games that you know eight different guys scored at least six points today? Well, I think they're number one. You look at the individual player and they're they're talented. You know, I noticed that early. I thought that with the guys that we had recruited, that there was some uh, potential there. How it grows and develops, you never know as they come through the career. But watching them this summer, I thought there was a lot of. We could score in a variety of ways. We had guys that had multifaceted games, guys that liked to post, guys that were comfortable from the perimeter. So it, surprised, no. Um, I think it's a strength of this team. And our better teams have always, you know, and obviously I've been very fortunate to be a part of a lot of really good teams here and other places that diversity and variety through your lineup and, and not being so dependent on one person or two people um, really makes you – It's it makes you that much more difficult to guard. So, you know, we're you know, we're still growing. We're not where we need to be yet. Um, but in terms of the versatility and the unselfishness of this group, I think that's pretty evident because they're a very tight. Um, you know, chemistry is terrific. And so that that shows when you specifically on both ends really. But when you have a group that's that uh, likes each other and really is bonded really well, um, you know, you can have those type of nights where you really share the ball and nobody cares who scores as long as Wisconsin scores. Danny, what did you think of your team's three-point selection tonight? At times it was too quick. Um, I thought specifically on a couple offensive rebounds, I don't have to go through the tape um, to see exactly how open we were, but I thought there was a couple times where we had offensive rebounds and could have made it hurt a little bit more and we took quick shots that maybe weren't that open or we weren't set or um, depending on who took it, but there was times where I thought we shot too quick, specifically after offensive rebounds. Um, the rest, off to look at the tape. I, I watched how much distance is between the shooter and the and the defender closing out. If they're able to touch their palm on the release, meaning the defender closing, it's we should have turned it down um, or shot faked and made a next the next play. Uh, did the ball touch the post? Did we shoot inside out threes? Or did the ball stay on the perimeter and we shoot, shot it when it got to whoever? So I, I'll grade all those and evaluate every shot that goes up. Um, but I thought specifically we talked about that in one of the huddles that out of offensive rebounds, we were shooting it too quick uh, when we had a chance to go right back inside. Uh, hi. What adjustments have you had to make with such a new team and young players like Andy Van Vliet, who haven't gotten many minutes in the past, are now taking on a, a larger role with the team? Combination of staying positive and holding everybody accountable. So it's a fine line between making sure I, everybody, two things we talked about today were before the game were discipline and details, and, and making sure every possession mattered, the details, being really good at all the little things. Um, but at the same time, knowing that we've got to gain some experience, and sometimes the best way to gain experience is to have some failure in terms of possessions don't go well. Um, you have mistakes that are made. You learn from them. Um, and, and then we got to grow the next time we're on the floor. So it's, it's a fine balance between trying to stay positive and encouraging, but at the same time making sure they understand what's good for the betterment of the team. Greg, a lot that's going to be made about Khalil's offensive game tonight, but I'm guessing Oni was a big part of your scouting report, stopping him, and, and Khalil was on him right. a good chunk of the time. What did you think? How, how did you think he did Terrific it? Terrific job. 
uh, you really accepted the challenge. We talked about that yesterday, and uh, you know Khalil didn't shoot on Friday and had some turnovers. And uh, I think it's that anniversary of his father's passing this past week, and I think that weighed on him on Friday. I could tell. Um, so I thought today he was he was his old self, and, and rightfully so. I know that's a very difficult time, having gone through it myself, and I'm 20 plus years older than him, so. Um, I, I thought he was really energized from the start. He took that as a challenge to play against a very good player, and and him, and he obviously had help because he wasn't the only guy that guarded him, and he and he also had help around him, uh, but really did a terrific job. Coach, is this kind of a trial by fire in the non-conference season with Yale and and Baylor? Could be UCLA too, and and Virginia on the road. Is that do you see that as a trial by fire for the young guys and uh, for this team that you said is still still trying to figure out its best game? Well, we have a pretty big fire coming in on Thursday first. Xavier, have you seen Xavier? Really good. So we'll worry about Thursday first before we worry about what comes down the road. But uh, it is, it's a challenging schedule. I mean, it's, I don't know if we've done the research of looking if we've had a more, uh, more of a gauntlet in the non-conference. But I tell you what, by the time we get to 2018, even though we'll have a couple Big Ten games in December, by the time we get to, we flip the calendar, we we'll have a pretty good idea of where we are, where we need to grow, what we're good at, what we're not so good at. Every game and every opportunity be a great learning experience. So, we're looking forward to you know enjoying this today because this is a this is a good team. You know they're a program that's had success over the years, and um, you know enjoying this today and then getting back to work on Tuesday and uh, having two days to prepare for a a really good Xavier team. It looked like right at the end of the half. Ethan limped off the floor, walked gingerly, and then came out with a sleeve in the second half. What happened there, and do you think that limited his effectiveness in the second half? I don't know what happened, and I I don't I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't think so because if he was limited at all, then the trainer would have said he couldn't play. The doctors could have said he couldn't play, so I wasn't told he couldn't play. So um, I don't know. I didn't see what happened. I'll watch the film and um, go from there.